Okay, I've got a fantastic little read for you. It's public domain. It's another Charles Dickens, because we love him. And uh, it's called The Life of Our Lord. I did not know about this one until the last few years. It was the one and only book that he wrote just for his family. And he made his children promise, and he put in his will, that they could not publish it. So it stayed in the family um, until 1930s. And the grandchildren got together and decided that they wanted to publish it to the world so that it would be a blessing to other people. Uh, funny thing about it, he says... This is um, when someone wrote in, let's see, Georgiana, Georgiana Hogarth, Charles' sister-in-law, wrote this about his refusal to publish Life of Our Lord. I must tell you now about the beautiful little New Testament which he wrote for his children. I'm sorry to say it is never to be published. He would never have it printed, and I used to read it to the little boys in manuscript before they were old enough to read writing themselves. I asked Charles if he did not think it would be well to have it printed at, a, at all events for private circulation if he would not publish it. He said he would look over the manuscript and take a week or two to consider. At the end of the time, he gave it back to me and said he had decided never to publish it or even to have it privately printed. He said I might make a copy of it for Peggy, Mrs. Dickens, or any one of his children, but for no one else. And he also begged that we would never hand the manuscript or a copy of it to anyone to take out of the house. So there was a handwritten copy that they read that he wrote and he allowed a copy to be made for his wife and his children and that was it and his sister. And he wouldn't even let it be taken out of the house. The family felt that they shouldn't um, have it published to honor his request and so they didn't. All of the children agreed. They closed rec. They closed ranks and protected their secret with great zeal. When, when Dickens died in 1870, it passed along with all of his private papers to Georgiana Hogarth, who was the one that wrote that, and from her to um, Henry Fielding Dickens. His wife Marie, or Mumsy, as she was known in the family, carefully hid it under her mattress, and my father tells me that marks from her bed springs are clearly visible. So this is an incredible little book um, that is about Dickens' faith. And it's interesting because the family, the great grandkids finally got together and decided that they had made a commitment and the, and the son said, I can't hold you to the commitment that my father had me make and so you can you you kids can get it published if that's what you feel you should do and they reread it and felt like it should be made available to the world and so they had it published and um, what it is is Dickens went through the New Testament and he rewrote it in his own well he rewrote the life of Christ in his own words that's why it's called the life of our Lord and he tells it in simpler language and then he kind of Every once in a while, we'll do a little, now see, this is what Jesus was doing, or this is why this is significant, or this is how we should follow his example, or this is how we can obey his words. And so there's not a lot of that. It's mostly the stories of Jesus' life. And it was really great to read aloud to our kids. They were able to follow along, and they had a great experience. It's not very long. I've got this small little... Um, hardbound copy with lots of margin space and a pretty good size font on it and it's 120 pages so it's not very long at all you can read it to your family really quickly he starts out and says um, I'm very my dear children I am very anxious that you should know something about the history of Jesus Christ for everybody ought to know about him no one ever lived who was so good, so kind, so gentle, and so sorry for all people who did wrong or were in any way ill or miserable as he was. And as he is now in heaven where we hope to go and all to meet each other after we are dead, there be happy and there be happy always together. You can never think what a good place heaven is without knowing who he was and what he did. So that's his introdu introduction to his children. One um, critique that I've heard from people and one of the things that did is it, it did strike me as I was reading it was that he presents 
Jesus, I guess the feeling that you take away from it is you wonder if Dickens believed that Christ was divine. He definitely knows that he's real. He believes in his goodness and his rightness and everything that he taught, and we should follow his example, and that he did die for us, and all of those wonderful things. But there's an element of just, like, faith and divinity that doesn't seem to be all the way quite there. And it's valuable to discuss with your kids and to talk about that and why that might be. And the truth is, I am sure that one of the big reasons why Dickens did not want this printed is because it was an expression of his own heartfelt faith. And in order to make it be something that truly came from the deepest part inside of him, he had to be very straightforward and honest in everything he said because he wanted to make that gift to his children. He wanted them to know what he truly believed and who he really was. And just bare his soul and to kind of like be exposed in that way and he didn't want anybody else to know. I mean, can you? he was so popular in his own day and he was popular on both continents. In fact, many people say that when he came to America, it, he was kind of like the first true international celebrity and he was hailed like a celebrity and treated like a celebrity and he made, when he came and did that second tour of, re, of read-alouds in America, he made uh, well over a million dollars. So, just incredibly successful. I think that's in today's dollars. But all he was doing was going around into halls and reading aloud and kind of acting out his plays. But anyway, so I'm sure that was a big part of it. I don't want to deal with people prying into my faith, but I want to make sure that I pass on something to my children that is so important to me. And so we do know that he really did love Christ and considered himself a Christian and wanted to go to heaven and wanted his children to go there and wanted to be a good person regardless of whatever mistakes he made as a human being on the planet. Um, I want to read to you the very end because it's really beautiful. This last paragraph. Remember, it is Christianity to do good. That's in all caps always, even to those who do evil to us. It is Christianity to love our neighbors as ourself and to do to all men as we would have them to to us. It is Christianity to be gentle, merciful, and forgiving and to keep those qualities quiet in our own hearts and never make a boast of them or of our prayers or of our love of God, but always to show that we love him by humbly trying to do right in everything. If we do this and remember the life and lessons of our Lord Jesus Christ and try to act up to them, we may confidently hope that God will forgive us our sins and mistakes and enable us to live and die in peace. So it is a sweet volume. It has a, a beautiful spirit about it um, because it's so honest. And because it's so transparent and genuine that he never even wanted it to be published, you feel like you're prying into someone's soul for a minute and that you're peeking in the window of a great family, um, a very fascinating family. And there's some, there's some really interesting insights about Jesus' life as well. And there are some good clarity about time frame of events and where he was and what he was doing. It's also just very helpful from a practical standpoint. It would be a fun little book to just quickly go through, okay, this is where he lived, this is what he did, and, and kind of map that out with your family and get clear about that. So this is The Life of Our Lord by Charles Dickens, um, a beautiful little introduction to the life of Jesus that I highly recommend, and we'll see you next time.